Okay, let's uh, read the scripture this morning before we begin our service. Okay, so we're going to read from Luke 9, 23, and let's read this together. Ready? Okay. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Amen. Um, what are some things that you are giving up that are your ways? Um, are you taking up your cross daily? Are you following Jesus? And that's a question that I ask myself time and time again. And it's really um, easy to get into routines and the things, uh, the responsibilities of the day. And I, I, if there are any moments of break, I really want to sit down and just watch my YouTube. But, <laughs> but I was pretty, I, I think I, I made the effort of giving up my ways this past week with trying to take moments uh, to pray, take moments to read a scripture, even though it might not be the whole chapter, at least the line to meditate and really, you know, for that to be my living bread for the day. And, you know, God is still gracious and he is so good that he still provides um, that comfort and peace through those little short moments. And I hope that you are too. So um, let's take this time to really come before the Lord um, wholeheartedly. Um, if you're not ready, if you're not awake like me, um, take this moment um, to, you know, really open our hearts and our mind to really receive what God has for you this morning and really expect great things because he is such a great God. So uh, we want to experience them together as one body. So uh, yeah, let's uh, pray together and, um, and then I'll uh, pray for us and then uh, we'll start. As this song says, you are our God and our firm foundation, that you are our rock and our solid ground. And we want to, Lord, stand upon this rock that is unshakable, that is immovable. And Lord, you are the hope of the world and you are the hope of our, of our lives. Lord, may you reign as we declare who you are this morning through our voices with these songs. Lord, may you receive our praises and our worship and as our living sacrifice, Lord. And may you receive all the glory that you deserve through our lips and our confession this morning. And open our hearts, God, to see the things that are true and that has value, the things that you care for, things that you love and give us the heart of love Lord your unfailing love Lord may that really um, 
pour upon us, Lord. May you anoint us with your holy oil and help us to stand righteous before you as we um, cover ourselves through the blood of the Lamb that purifies us, Lord. And may you receive all the glory as we sing of your praises this morning. May you bask in our praises this morning, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. If you can stand with us.
glory to Jesus. Salvation. And joy to the nations.
Let us pray. Lord, we are thankful for how you have brought us here today, for the sun and the moon, stars and vast ocean. We praise and thank you for all of your creation. Remind us of our purpose in our jobs, classes, and everyday life, not to be distracted by the false promises of the world. Lord, we are thankful for how you have been working in our house churches. We pray that you would continue to lead them and empower us with your spirit. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Good morning, Journey Christian Fellowship. My name is Nick, and we are happy to worship with you for those of us who are worshiping with us online and for all of you who are here this morning in person. But before we get started with the rest of today's service, I would like to direct your attention to our weekly bulletin where you can see our upcoming events. Give everyone a quick moment to scan the QR code to view the bulletin. Uh, the bulletin is also found on the Church Center app and our website at journeyslow.org. Something to highlight this week. 
is that small groups are at 1120, but they are not in the JCF house over there. They will be in the multi-purpose room, the NPR, just across the courtyard. Um, and at this time, I would like to invite up Denise to give an announcement. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so just your friendly reminder, not about Finals Dinner, but about the spiritual formation retreat that we have coming up. Um, so as you all have heard over the past couple of weeks, we have a spiritual formation retreat, which will be a time for us to really practice how to Sabbath together along with some other different spiritual disciplines. So it's a great way for us to just come and Sabbath together in community. So highly encourage y'all to register. Um, the early bird special already passed, but um, you can still register on our website, journeyslow.org forward slash events or on a church center app. We are also opening up registrations for individuals who might be only interested in coming just for the day use only. So just for Saturday, um, where you'll just be coming like around 10 a.m. and then you leave after dinner, so you're not sleeping over. And there will be a $35 charge if you would like to come for just a Saturday. And for children three and under, it will be free as well. But you will still have to register. So if you plan to come on Saturday only, register. And also, if you're planning to attend the Sunday worship service, so that Sunday, so uh, April 14th, we will not be having service here. So you come on April 14th, the doors will be locked. There will be no one here. Lights off. You'll be confused, and then there'll be a sign that says, go to Lopez Canyon Bible Camp, which is by Lopez Lake. So if you're planning to attend Sunday service that Sunday, you also need to register. So we can have a head count because we will be having lunch provided. But if you're just coming for Sunday, it will be free. So if you're coming Saturday, $35. If you're coming Saturday and Sunday, only $35 because Saturday. So Sunday is free. So please register if you're planning to come on Sunday and register all your family members so that we can get an accurate head count for food. Um, and if you are planning to attend but are unable to afford a portion of the retreat or all of the retreat, you can just send me an email for a scholarship. We do have scholarship money available to help those in need. Or if you just feel like I don't really want to pay for it, you can also email us too. Um, and with that, we have a presentation from the children's ministry. children ministry <laughs> and the kids are going to do a little preview of Easter hi. song <laughs> testing the mic say hi hi <laughs> hi okay Well, that brightened my day. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pray for uh, the offering. 
Uh, JCF is a member-supported church, which means that all the ministries and staff are supported by our joyful and generous giving. If you are new with us, please don't feel any obligation to give whatsoever. Uh, we're just glad that you're here worshiping with us today. And if you are a member of JCF you are, and you are a regular tender, would you please consider giving generously in light of how God has been gracious and generous to us? Give generously, systematically, proportionally, and joyfully as an expression of God's lordship over your finances, an exercise of good stewardship, and to further God's kingdom together. You can easily give via the Church Center app on our website, text to give, or you can also drop off a check at the box at the back of the room. Um, let us pray. Hey, God, uh, I thank you so much for the opportunity that we have uh, to uh, gather here this morning and the opportunity to uh, give to your kingdom. Uh, God, I pray a blessing over uh, all of the resources that we uh, give to um, your church, and I pray uh, that you would multiply these things, uh, that they would advance your kingdom, and that uh, we would see the fruit uh, of the resources that we invest, God. God, I pray that... Um, Whatever we give, whether it be a, uh, whether it looks like a lot or a little, I pray that uh, it would be multiplied, and I pray that uh, you would use it mightily uh, to minister to the city of San Luis Obispo, to the college students here, to the post-college people here, God, um, and to uh, everyone uh, that comes to uh, our church and interacts with people from our church, God. I pray a blessing over the resources our church has and uh, may we uh, steward it well. May we use it to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that, I will invite up Denise again. Hello again. I'm back. <laughs> so just a reminder again, Finals Dinner is starting tomorrow. So woohoo, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, students, you do have finals to take. I apologize. But we hope that you can be blessed by having free finals dinner meals on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. So this is, a, again, a reminder, this is a great opportunity for all of us who are not taking finals to really bless our college neighbors. Because if you are a college student, or even if you are a high school student, you know how stressful finals week is, and it's terrible. Like, you can't even think about, how am I supposed to eat? So this is a great way for us to provide for the students a pretty relatively healthy meal and <laughs> it's pretty tasty so highly encourage y'all to sign up we do need a bunch of volunteers so the reason why we started doing final center is because we saw we have a huge call we have a lot of college students in our church but even living in san luis obispo there's a huge college population both at cal poly and cuesta and as we look into the, the harvest we see that it's there's so many people who don't know jesus and need to experience god's love and that we can be a vessel of that in our church and our resources so uh, we want to be faithful to the calling that god has given us to really serve our college neighbors um so i really want to invite you all to um, really have that heart that jesus has when he sees the loss without a shepherd and that's why we want to do this final dinner as a way for us to even love those who are so lost every quarter we have like Probably around 150 to 200 students who come in, and easily like 70% of them don't go to our church. So it's like how many times you're in a, a church event where 70% of the people who are there actually aren't your church members? So I really want to encourage you all that this is a great opportunity for you to really love on those who are our neighbors because they literally don't go here, and for us to really show the love of Christ to them. So two invitations. So if you're not a college student, highly encourage you to come volunteer. There's many different ways that you can volunteer. And even if you're not available Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, today after service and after small group, we will need help to set up the NPR um, just to make it more able to fit all those students. And then um, after the Korean service, we're actually gonna convert the sanctuary into a study hall again. So we will need more help to move the chairs and set up more tables so that um, we can have the space open for students to study since we also are aware that the library is under construction so they have less places to study. Um, so if you're interested in volunteering, um, please sign up on our website, journeyslow.org forward slash events and also on the Church Center app. We ask that volunteers to come by 5.40 or earlier, depending on what time you're available. And if you notice on the volunteer form that there isn't separate roles 
um, out because we really want to encourage everyone to have the same servant heart mindset that Jesus had when he came and he washed the disciples' feet and he said, do as I do, and he did that. So in the same way, I want to encourage all of us to be ready to serve whatever role it's going to be. It might be taking out the trash. It might be doing dishes. It might be serving food. It might not be glamorous, but I really ask you to come and just be willing to serve in whatever capacity that we will need for the night because there's many needs. So I just highly encourage you to sign up whichever times that you're available. And we also encourage all volunteers, if possible, to park off campus so that we can save as many parking spots for students who come. And also, a reminder, if you are bringing soup or desserts, please label all allergens because some people might be allergic to something that might be in your food. And um, so please label that, and otherwise, we're going to make you label it anyways. <laughs> and my second invitation is for all you students who come. Um, this is a way for you to be blessed, but also it's a great opportunity for you to invite your study group members, or your group project members, or your classmates, or that random person that you see on the street at your school. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to make that invitation, that winsome invitation of, hey, like, you might not come to our church on Sunday, but would you like to come and get a free food as a way for them to see, like, hey, Christians aren't that crazy, that church isn't that bad, that we can be a space for them to feel love and experience God's love in this very practical way, and you never know what's going to happen. So I just really highly encourage you to make those invitations, and also while you're at the dinner, just look around. And if you see, there are plenty of people who come who don't know anybody, like Dora mentioned in her testimony last week, they're so brave. <laughs> Will you be brave and go up and sit with them and just talk to them and even just make them feel a little bit more welcome because it's hard coming to a place where you don't know anyone. So highly encourage you college students, if you s just see anyone who's sitting by themselves, just go and sit with them. Like if you just one person or you have your friend, just come and sit with them and just sacrifice your s a little bit just to make them feel loved too. Um, and. Like I mentioned earlier, we are opening our sanctuary up and our church up for studying. So if you are a student who is interested in studying during the week, either starting today after the Korean service up until Friday, please send me a text message. That is my phone number. Please text me with your name because I do not have all your numbers. And um, right after service, you can find me by the NPR door and I will get you an access code and show you how to access it. So. If you would like to study, you're welcome to invite your friends to come study with you. So it's a place for everyone to be blessed. So send me a text message with your name and see me at the NPR. So again, volunteers, park off campus if you can. Sorry, get text messages. Hey, whoever texted me. <laughs> I think, oh, I have your phone number already. <laughs> Um, so just text me, and yeah, so welcome to invite your friends to come study. We have great Wi-Fi, um, and we will have instant ramen available for students if you want a snack, um, but don't use this fire or the stuff. So yeah, so volunteer on our website. We still need a lot of volunteers for soups, um, and last time we ran out of soups, so we don't want the students to starve, so please sign up for to bring a soup, and you can find that again on our website, journeyslow.org forward slash events or church center app. Thank you, everybody. Everything we do is because what Jesus had told us to go make disciples of all nations. Amen. And we don't make disciples just because they're Christians, but we make disciples even though when they're not a Christian. Sometimes we misunderstand that we disciple people who are Christians and we evangelize people who are not Christians, but we have to make disciples of non-Christians. That's what Jesus meant when he told us in Matthew 29, 28, verse 19 and 20. And I want you to really understand that, that we make disciples of, of who are not Christians. And we want people to know that how Jesus came and died for their sins. And we do this every quarter, creating this opportunity for us to serve the college students. And they are our local mission field. And uh, we invite non-Christian, Christian, Christian um, friends and who may need to experience God's love. The people who are studying around you, who are in your lab classes, who are in your classrooms, and people who are living in your dorms or in whatever context that we may be in contact with college students, then we want to invite them and for them to experience God's love. In, in order for us to make disciples, you know, we need power. 
You know, this is power of, like in Greek word, is the dynamite power, dunamis, right? And this power is not just that you blow up one time, but it's continuously blowing up in some sense of like Chinese firecrackers. You know, when, when they open a new store, right? It's not like a pong, but it's ba 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 I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it is crazy. And it's that kind of moving power of God working inside of us. And without this power, we are not able to accomplish what God wants us to do. We will not know God's will. And we will just be missing out on the things that God wants us to experience as his children. And where do you think is the source of the power? Why? Right? Of course, it's, it's God, right? It's Jesus, right? And, and God says to us in Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Will, they will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not and faint. And God gives this power to his children, his people, to accomplish his will. Right, for us to make disciples of all nations, which is God's will. Right? And I think it will be sad. You know, you know, it will be sad if we does not we don't experience right, God's power working inside of us. Maybe we are saved, but we will never be used by God. That's so sad, right? God not using us, not knowing God's will, not right, doing the will of God. And to me, you know, the definition of success is knowing God's will and doing it. It's not going to Harvard. It's not going to, you know, prestige universities and, you know, right, and uh, get wonderful degrees and get a nice job and get paid lots of money and owning everything you want to own. But it's simply doing God's will, knowing God's will and doing God's will, right, it's the success that Christians should have. You know, and so, you know, there'll be another thing to be sad, right? That, that how God is using us and that we'll not be able to be used by God. That we don't even know that God's supposed to use us, right? And, and it'll be sad that we'll miss out on that blessing, right? Those classmates or our neighbors that we ought to invite and for them to be included in the kingdom of God or to experience God's love. But because of our um, shyness or our unwillingness to reach out and to talk to those individuals and they will be missing out on the blessings that they are supposed to receive, right? And, and how it would be sad that we miss out how God's glory is supposed to be extended, supposed to be growing, right? God's power not being realized, God's power not being seen, and God's power being lost. But let's not be sad Christians, but a powerful one where God's power works in us and through us to make disciples of all nations. You see how this is so related, as I shared with you last week, that I told you the specific power that I want to share with you this week. And this week, I want to share with you one, and I will do one next week as well. And this week, the power that I'm talking about is from Acts 1.8. Right. Let's all read it together. Ready? Go. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let's read it one more time and put emphasis in that power when you read that. <laughs> right? You know, that's mean it. Put the body into it. Now, that coming from your stomach, right? Ready? Go one, one, one time. Go. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Here's the context, 
right? In Acts 1, you know, Jesus is talking to his disciples, right? This is after resurrection and before ascension. And Jesus uh, was here for 40 days, which, no, which signifies a, something very important, that showing to his disciples and to the world that he was surely alive, uh, it wasn't just a phantom. It wasn't just a, a momentary thing. But stay here for 40 days, right, telling people that, that surely that Jesus is alive and well. Right? And after 40 days, he did ascend to the heavens. He ate with them. He did life with them. And he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And one of the conversations that disciples have saying, oh, when is God going to Right? Restore the kingdom of God. And basically, Jesus says, don't worry about it. <laughs> and he says, just focus on right, that promises that I'm going to send you. And Jesus says, stay in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere else. For the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and sure enough, in uh, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, right? We call it that Pentecost. And we see, right, in Acts 1 8 again, and in chapter 2, in the Pentecost, which means uh, 50th, right? And, and, the, and the Pentecost, an, another name for that is called the Feast of Harvest, right? The harvest is a, definitely Pentecost has a harvest motif. Harvest means what? Right, the, 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 the corn or the wheat, right, is barley, they're growing, then you're gathering it, right? Remember Jesus said many times, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, right? And also he means that gathering of people into the, his barn, his house, his family. So people coming to faith, that's what Jesus is talking about. People are ready to hear and accept and receive Jesus Christ, but no one's out there telling Right? about Jesus Christ. And that's what he's saying. And definitely Pentecost has a harvest motif. And you see in Acts chapter 2, this is Acts chapter 1, but in Acts chapter 2, we see this harvest, right? We, we see this Pentecost happening, right? And where Holy Spirit comes on the disciples and people are able to hear that they are from many different regions of that place where they don't speak the same language, but as the disciples were declaring God's wonders, the work of God, work of God, uh, people were able to hear in their own language. You know? And that's all we see in Acts chapter 2. Definitely is a harvest motif. And they're able to hear the gospel in their own language. And they're able to respond to the, whole, uh, to the gospel they are speaking. Right? And it is an amazing work of God. And it's the Pentecost is not just about miracles, but it's about hearing the gospel. Amen? It's about the hearing the wonders of God, who God is, how God he created, right? And how people sin, but then he just did not, you know, do nothing about people sinning, but that God had a plan all along to, to send his son, Jesus Christ, to, to, to die for the people of the sins of the world so that people can receive forgiveness and they can be included in the kingdom of God, right? And those, definitely that is a harvest motif. And, and, but we also see it is a necessary power because we don't have this power for us to do what God is telling us. A lot of times in the kingdom of God, we think that God tells us what to do. It's like being a military. God tells you what to do, but now you need to muster up all the strength that you have, right? To carry out that, you know, that commandment of God. That's what we usually think. Yeah. But then we realize again and again, we don't have the power to do it. And that's why in Philippians 2.13, Paul says that God is working in you and God gives you his will and power to do it. So without receiving God's power, you won't be able to do what God is telling us to do. So we have to receive what God is telling us to do and also the power we need to, right, to carry out what God is telling us to do. Right? And so we don't have this love. We don't have this power. We don't have what it takes right, even to do this life. 
We were created to be ever in dependence in God. We are to depend on God, right? That's why Jesus said, apart from me, you can do what? Some things? You can do nothing. Literally, nothing that is significant, nothing that is like meaningful, right? That gives satisfaction and fulfillment that we can do nothing. Nothing is nothing. One of the pastors I know in Korea is a mega church pastor and I think they can seat like 60,000 people at once. You know, they have like 150 ushers when they collect uh, offerings. You know, I counted it, you know, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, yeah, their choir is like a thousand member choir, you know, uh, maybe I'm lying, but you know, uh, the choir part, I, I didn't choir, I think, you know, I keep losing, you know, count, you know. But it's a humongous church, but literally, but I heard them say again and again, without Christ, I can do nothing. Without Christ, I can do nothing. And he prays like 17 hours a day, and, and I don't know when he eats, but that's what he does. He just prays and prays and reads the Bible and prays. And, and I, you know, in the beginning, I kind of didn't believe him. Like, for, I think it's kind of a lot. You know, I mean, that's in the Bible. You have to say that, right? Of, apart from Christ, I can do nothing. But I heard him saying again and again, and I really see that like, emanating from his life that he really believes and lives out. Where apart from Christ, that he can do nothing. And that's the same thing for us. If we don't receive this power, we don't receive the Holy Spirit, right? we don't uh, commune with the Holy Spirit, and we don't, we don't allow the Spirit of God to take more reign, right? Con- control of our lives, that we can do nothing. Now, this is necessary power for us to live. Right? Not just about you know, making disciples, but in the ways that you want to live out this Christian life that God has called you to live. You cannot do it without Holy Spirit power working in you. And this is a gift of God. God's gifted us for free. Right? I'm Korean, so I love free stuff. You know? You know? Yeah, it's free. And it's a gift from God. We just need to, right? When somebody gives you a gift, what do you do? You need to receive it. And whatever, then you have to use it, right? You can just receive the gift and don't use it. And what kind of gift is that? Right? That's not a good gift. Good gift is that somebody gives you, then you use it all the time. And when, when somebody gives you a gift, and if, you, if I see you guys using that gift, I'm like, wow, that's a good gift. Yeah. Right? And that we need to continuously using that gift that God has given us. Yeah. And this power is for us to not just do the miracle, like last week I told you, right? What you draw people with, that's what you draw them to. And right? that's very, very important, right? And so this, this power enables us to be Jesus' witness, right? Being a witness means what? As a one who has experienced Jesus and gives evidence or proof, right? Somebody who has experienced Jesus, right? That who he is. Right, how we are deeply loved by Jesus. Jesus loves us. Right? He is for us. He's not against us. Right? And somebody who has experienced that, and in the ways that he has lived a perfect life, sinless life. And when we look at that and we say, Oh, that's the life that I should have lived. Right? And also that is a life that I am right, I'm striving to live as Holy Spirit working inside of us. When you see somebody great, then you say, wow, that's so great that Holy Spirit working in that person. Yeah, that's a great thing to say. But the next step is that Holy Spirit can do in me that as well. Amen? Holy Spirit can do that in you as well. Amen? Like Apostle Paul. And yeah, God worked amazingly in his life. And Holy Spirit can do that in your life as well. Amen? Isn't that the good news? Don't just sit there like, wow, you know, admiring. No, God can do that in your life, in my life, in, in, in the life of his children. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the good news. That's the hope that we have. And how Jesus died, right, to save us from God's wrath. And that we proclaim this deliverance from God's wrath to others as well. Isn't that the good news? Amen. That we're no longer under, living under the wrath of God, right? And, but God has given us this gift so that we can live as a children of God. There's a big difference between the wrath of God and children of God. Yeah, right? Doesn't matter what AJ messes up, man, he's still my kid. You know? Yeah, right? Amen? 
Yeah, he has code to everything in our church. <laughs> yeah, right? He, he just can't come through my office, you know? <laughs> uh, right? He's a special privilege because he's a PK, perfect kid, right? Yeah. He's here, that's why I'm not gonna, you know? Yeah. Right? And so that's, that, that, we're children of God, we're not a children of wrath. And God, right? He, he, he so loved us, full of mercy and full of grace, that he sent his son to die, not for Jesus' sins, but the sins of the world, that, that he bled his precious blood to pay for our sins, the sins of the world, because God is holy, God is just, and God is righteous. He just could not right, wave his magic wand and say, okay, sin, be gone. No, he couldn't do that because there's a sin and somebody had to pay for it because he is a perfect, righteous, and just God. In this you know, heavenly economy, God had to pay for that sin, right? Because we, we have received forgiveness of the sin. So Jesus carried all of my sin when he died on the cross. All of my past sins, present sins, and future sins. And God has, Jesus has carried all your sins too. All your past sins and present sins and the future sins on his shoulders when he died. You know, and we have been baptized in the name of the Father. In the Bible, name means his character, right? How God so loved us in his character, character of the Son, right? And the character of the Holy Spirit, continuing to focus on the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ, declaring that we have a new life. Amen? Yeah, our old life is gone. Behold, the new have come. Right? God has given us a new mission, new life, and God has gathered us together in his body, extension of his body, that he is our head and carrying out his work, displaying his character, knowing his will, and doing his will according to the power that he gives us. Amen? Yeah, that's what a wonderful way to live, knowing his will and doing his will with the power that he gives. Right. And, and the next you know, phrase is, says, in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And just think about the barrier. Let's say we need to go to the Timbuktu. You know where Timbuktu is? I had to look it up. Anybody? Africa. Africa where? What country? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, see, this is a good thing you pray, prepare a sermon. I have to look it up. It's in Mali. Yeah, contra, it's a West Africa right next to Burkina Faso. You know, I've been to Ghana, but Ghana is there. Burkina Faso is there and stuff like that. It's in Timbuktu. Just imagine, you know, that we need to go to Timbuktu, you know, and this. What are some barriers that we face if we were to go to Timbuktu? Visa, yeah, there you go. Very <laughs> practical. He just repli- applied his uh, passport, that's why. <laughs> Renewal, you know. What else? Language, right? I don't even know what language, you know, they speak. You know, uh, either like some African language or French or English or something, right? You know, right? What else? What are some barriers? Culture, right? Do they bow or do they do this or what's up? You know, uh, right? What kind of culture do they like? How do they re- uh, treat the old people, young people? You know, even the men and women, all these things. Well, how are we gonna get there? You know, now it's like airplanes everywhere. But just getting there a long, long time ago, even like 50 years ago, it wasn't that easy. Right? Last time when I went to Africa in 2010, right, it took us like a 35 hours. Even going to South Asia, it takes a long time. Right? Boat, train, bus, motorcycle, right? And like they call it Bora Bora, you know, not Boba Boba, bo, bo, but Bora Bora, you know, it's like a motorcycle taxi. And sometimes we have to walk, right? It's very different things that we have to learn. There's a lot of barriers that we face. And what about enemies, right? And this Judea and Samaria, Samaria and Jerusalem people, they were like a little bit, little bit of a, you know, enemy state, Right? And, you know, as an American, who do we consider like, you know, enemy? Maybe Russia. Maybe God tells you to go to Russia and say, no, God, this is their enemy. I'm not going to go to Russia. You know, they just invaded Ukraine, you know, like a heck no. You know? Like even that, if God tells us to go, like what are we going to do? There's a barrier, right? That's something that we need to deny ourselves, like the verse that, you know, Anna read for us. Right? 
And, and what are we leaving as we leave our home? Huh? We leave our country. We leave our families. You know, maybe you take someone with you, you know, but then some of them, you cannot take everybody. You cannot take your elderly mom and dad, right? Maybe God tell you to take them, but sure, then, but probably not sometimes, right? What else do you leave? Comfort, right? Yeah, man, I like my bed. You know, every time I come back from a trip, I was like, oh, my bed. <laughs> so good. You know, oh, my car. You know, I don't have to depend on anybody. I can just go wherever I want to go. Right? There's a lot of things. Right? We like the, oh, my toilet. You know? You know? I, uh, man, you know, I, I don't know. The, some of the countries that you've been to, that's the first question, question my daughter asks if we're going to go someplace. Do they have a Western toilet? Or do they have, like, squatty? You know what squatties are, right? You squatty and... And like some of the nice squatties is, is a, you know, is a water base, you know, water comes shh, you know, like that. Some of the not so good squatty is just a hole in the ground, you know, and those things are not scary. There's many, many jokes about that. How do you fall? Right. And when, whenever you fall, you know, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go like this. <laughs> so you want to catch yourself, you know, <laughs> you know, and don't ever raise, lift your hands up and say, hallelujah. Look, you know, and you're going to fall right back in, you know. So there are difficulties. There are barriers. But you know what? But love of God compels us to go. Even how Denise was sharing. Love of God works in us, knowing that there are lost. There are people that who do not know Christ. You know, when they die, they will go to Christless state forever and ever. And that right, love that God has for them works in us. That makes us deny ourselves, right? You know, get rid of all this entertainment and our comfort, right? Our, even some of our family members, right? And to go to place where God wants us to go. I want to show you a couple of slides and... Um, uh, you know, my sabbatical is this year. And so one of the places that we're going to go in South Korea is, is this place. And I know it's hard to see, right? Can you see that left, right, left upper corner, right? Some of you guys can, but don't worry. I, you know, made it a little bigger just for you to see, right? What, what did you say? Foreign Missionary Cemetery. You don't have to be the first one. First one is kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Foreign Missionary Cemetery. In Korea, there's this place where they have gathered many foreign missionaries who have lived and who have died in Korea, and they have made this place that we're going to go visit, right? And some of them are um, been there for like for over 30 years, 40 years, some of them. And some of them have been only like nine months and they died. And it's hard. And there are many, many kids Children who have died there. Because, you know, we don't have the medical facility. Many of them were uh, medical doctors or educators. You know, this is like in the late 1800s, right? Then when they went there. And some of the famous people are, you know, um, Underwood. And he's the one um, who established a, one of the first universities in Korea. And I, those, those of you who watch Korean, universe, uh, Korean drama, right, there's a big three universities in Korea. It's called SKY, right? Uh, sky, meaning like it was really, really high. It's like a Harvard, MIT, and uh, I don't know, one other, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> you know, right uh, Harvard, MIT, and Cal Poly, you know? <laughs> ha, 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 you know? <laughs> right? Well, it's just, it's just it's that. So it's a Seoul National University and Goryeo, you know, University and Yonsei. And this Underwood, he's the one who, in a way, founded this Yonsei University long, long, long time ago. And he was there more than 31 years. And one thing amazing about that person, four generations of his family uh, served as a missionary there and died there. Yeah, and their cemetery you know, tombstone is there, you know, yeah. And there's a great sacrifice, right? Yes, there is a cost, right? But then the question you need to ask is that, is Jesus worth it? Is Jesus worth every sacrifice that we ever, ever consider and we ever paid with our lives, 
with other people's lives. I'm not talking about your comfort, you do, you know, but then, you know, that we have to really pay with our lives, the sacrifice in order to pay the sacrifice in order for us to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And this lady right here, she, she lived um, nine months in Korea yeah, and she passed away. But then, you know, it's amazing how God uses that story, that life, right? I know some missionary to go into Africa and while he was being ready, he died. He didn't even get to go to Africa at all. But then that story broke out and it moved many students' lives and many students, you know, like volunteered to go to Africa in a way because he couldn't go anymore. Right? And, and this work is God's work. Amen? You know, God uses us, but it's God's work. Right? God begins and God brings the fruit and God brings the conviction of sin and judgment and righteousness. Our responsibility is allow God to use us. Allow God to, you know, we use us like a glove and Holy Spirit coming inside of us and doing whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do, experiencing God's power. And I think some things that we need to overcome is that, you know, giving up our comfort and giving up our shyness. As I told you many times, I'm, I'm so shy. I, I used to be very shy, but not anymore. But I'm still shy once in a while. But let me give you a few steps for all of us to uh, follow you know, this week. Right? One, week is, one thing is that how we need to pray, right? We need to pray, Lord, lead us, lead me, right? God, show me somebody that I need to invite to. Amen. And you go to classrooms and you go to your, your uh, you know, uh, neighbors or go to workplaces. Like, yeah, Lord, I want to experience your power. I want to experience you. I want you to use me. Like, still show me, show me who I need to, right, right, uh, that I need to invite, I need to talk to. And I think next thing is that we need to really open your mouth. And I think how God's power works is that you open your mouth and God gives us words to say. Amen? Yeah, amen. Just like in, in, you know, how Jesus tells us in uh, Luke chapter 2, or well, John chapter 2, like turning the water into wine. Do you think, like, when do you think that actually the water changed into wine? You know, when the water was being filled up? Or when the person, the servant was taking the water and to the, you know, the master of ceremony? I don't know. <laughs> right? But then I think it's towards the end, you know, because I think it's like, oh, it's clear, it's clear. Oh, it's red. <laughs> or, or maybe there's a white wine too or whatever it is, right? Yeah, I don't know. But I think sometimes we need to open our mouth and allow God to power to work in us and work through us and gives us the words to say, you know? And so when you go to class, look around. Maybe people who are sitting near you. Maybe you already know some of those people. And start talking to them. Open your mouth and talk to them and listen. Yeah. Listen what they say. And, and, and uh, have a conversation. I think it's something that we really need to a uh, lesson is uh, having a conversation. You know? Yeah, I think we're not very, very good at that. It's not monologue. You know, just listen. And as a pastor, you know, we don't really good at, we're not, we don't really do good, good job and listening either, right? And so we need to listen. And based on that, we can ask questions. And, you know, as the final is coming up, then you just ask them, hey, what's your plans for studying? Are you going to study well? How are your studying going, right? You can totally, uh, library close. What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to study? Yeah. Oink, oink, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know this wonderful place. We have AC and we have a heater, you know, and, uh, you know, lighting and, you know, and they have a lamian. Oh, my goodness. You know, they have everything. Hot water, right? You can come and study. But also Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have tri-tip on Monday. We have some soup on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have the bibimbap, the best Korean restaurant in San Luis Obispo is at JCF. Amen. <laughs> Several years ago, you know, I don't know when it stopped working. You know, we, I used to Google Korean restaurant, San Luis Obispo, our church pops up. <laughs> it doesn't do that now. Yeah, because I think there's other Korean restaurants has, you know, uh, they serve Korean food. It's like that. And the best news is, is what? It's free, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's free. And I, I, I guarantee you, you know, our tri-tip on Monday is better than the Firestone. You guys don't agree? 
Yeah, right? I agree. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? And, and don't just ask questions, but wait for an answer. Get the answer. That little awkward science, silence, right? What are you going to study? You want to give you a ride? You know, if you need a ride, call that number, like the 510 number, Denise's number. You know, <laughs> she'll arrange somebody to pick up people, right? Wait for an answer. Because you ask, wait for an answer. And to arrange rides and be certain, you know, that they can have a ride. And when they come, talk to them. Talk to them. Talk to them about church. You know, like even asking them like, hey, what do you think? The whole church is behind this thing where they want to provide meal for you guys for free. <laughs> Why? Right? Because of Jesus. Amen? Because of the Great Commission. Because Jesus' love overflows them. And they want to reach and bless other students for free. <laughs> Monday through Wednesday, right? And study space as well. And those of you, right? And when they come and like Denise says, how we need to come, you know, like when they're sitting there by themselves, how we need to go to them and talk to them, right? And they're brave to be there by themselves. Oh, man. But sometimes I do feel that barrier, you know. I'm 55 years old, and, you know, I'm generation gap, you know. So, so I'm, like, I'm middle age, you know, and these this young people, I mean, they're like my son and my daughter and stuff. And so it's, sometimes I feel awkward, but it's just a Satan's lies, you know. It is. There's no barrier, right? You know, it's, it's all in my head. I need to overcome that barrier with the power of the Holy Spirit, and talk to them and have a good conversation, right? And not just about God, including God, but other things about life as well, right? And, and it's an opportunity for us to serve, amen? Yeah, for us to serve. And, and you know, and our goal is 100% of the people serve 100% of the things that we need, amen? Like the body of Christ, Right? This, this, this body, this body that all 100 things or 100% of the body part needs to go well in order for me to produce a fine golf swing, you know? And maybe legs not moving or your, you know, head is no good or something like that. And you won't be able to produce that fine motion. And just like how body functions, yeah? How we need to show humility and serving like Jesus Christ. Right? And you know, sometimes we think, oh, I want to be like Christ. But you know what Jesus is known for? His humility and his service. Everybody said that. Humility and service. Humility yeah. And, and of course, one more obedience, right? You know, humility, service, and obedience. And, and that's what God is giving us that opportunity. You know, Denise didn't show this, but you can do this one. This one gives you our, um, uh, what do you call that? Our spreadsheet. Go ahead and check it out. You know, oh, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so technologically, you know, not, not so behind, you know, like definitely catching up to, uh, you know, 19th century, one century at a time, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? And so put your name there. Does it come up? Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, Did you, if your name there, if you don't see your name there, put your name there. Come and serve and come and just you know, talk to people. Don't eat until we serve all the students <laughs> yeah, because sometimes we have shortages of food, but we want all our guests to eat first. Amen? Right? Amen? Don't eat first and you eat when we have leftovers, right? And we don't have leftovers, we have ramen. <laughs> yeah. And it's an opportunity for us to be like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Humility and service. God using us. Right? To share the good news. Share just something about Christ. Right? You're helping them take a one step towards Christ. Maybe they weren't even looking at Christ. But just because of your conversation with them, maybe they have turned their head looking at Christ. They even know who Jesus Christ is. God using us as an evangelist. Can you imagine yourself as like, hey man, I'm an evangelist. God is using me as an evangelist. What a wonderful thing that is. And how God has placed you strategically in your places, your studies and your school and your, your homes and, and wherever you are to be a blessing to those people around you as a such as time of this. What a wonderful opportunity it is. Let's not lose it. Let's not lose on this opportunity. Let's not lose and miss out on experiencing God's power. 
miss out on being a blessing to others, missing out on how God can use me, how God can use me and grow me to be like Christ, how God gives us those opportunity. And you may say like, God, where's my opportunity? He's right here (laughs) for you to be like Christ in humility and service and pray to God, God, grow me, grow me to be like Christ as I humble myself, as I serve these students so that God can make me like Jesus. I'll show you the last image and I'm done. You know, there's a two seas in Jerusalem area. One of them is Sea of Galilee and the other one is Dead Sea, right? Sea of Galilee is fresh. They have a lot of fish living there, right? You hear stories about people catching fish in the Old Test- uh, in New Testament. You know, Dead Sea, nothing grows there. It's Dead Sea, that's why it's called Dead Sea. You know why? Sea of Galilee has an outlet, a Jordan River. You know, when you have an outlet, an opportunity for you to be humble and to serve, right? To, to use God-given power to accomplish His will, you stay fresh. If you don't, you just take, 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 no outlet, you're dead. And God is urging us to stay fresh. Right? To have an outlet, practice the outlet, knowing God's will and doing God's will. Let's go make disciples of all nations. Let's go make disciples of Cal Poly students. Let's go make disciples of Cal Poly students, one student at a time, starting with people living and studying right next to you. May God help us wonderfully and powerfully. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you so much for your wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit that resides in us as we have confessed and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Father, many times we have lived without experiencing that power, not overcoming those barriers. Father, we ask you, work in us powerfully this week as we serve Cal Poly students during our finals week. Help us to humble ourselves. Help us to serve like you served. And pray unto you that we may connect with you and hear you and know you and experience your power working in us and through us. As we serve, that we become like Jesus Christ. Make us like Sea of Galilee, fresh, vibrant, life may flourish in our lives as we know your will and accomplish your will to make disciples of our nation by the power you provide for us in your spirit. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, recently, my uh, in-laws uh, began a business, so I'm helping out with them uh, with their business, so I get to meet a lot of different people. And um, usually, I don't really interact all that much because I'm an introvert. But um, this uh, opportunity gets me to meet a lot of different people. But there's this one person that came in, and that person had a very strong personality. And um, and the things um, that she was sharing, um, I, I don't know, it, the conversation kind of led to also talking about our church and that I go to church. And, and she said, oh, I believe in the Unitarian, you know, like um, church. And uh, talking about her values, about how if it comes from the heart, then everything is good. And, um, you know, for me, I'm thinking, oh, no, that's not good. (laughs) That's a red light, you know. And um, so, I mean, it wasn't a conversation where I can share the gospel uh, at the moment, but... um, I, it gave me the heart to really pray for that person. And um, it's not someone, I feel like that, pers- that person has been ingrained in my head for uh, very strongly that I continue to remember her just throughout the past few weeks. So um, yeah, like 
even that platform, you know, I feel like God has given it to me in a way where I can just be mindful of our community, you know, the people that comes by for me to be prayerful for, even though they don't know that, you know, like it's, it's great. So it's, it's also an avenue for me to also, you know, like be a blessing. Um, and also for me to be, to be alive too in, in Christ. Um, so let's all stand um, together and sing our last song. to wander off and seeing the things in the world, but for us to center our eyes on you, Jesus. We thank you for your amazing free salvation and the redemption that you have accomplished through your cross. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live in us and you have given us this family at the body of Christ to really seek you together and to experience your power together. We glorify you, Jesus, and we thank you for your amazing grace. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone.